Hey guys, I'm Dr. Joe Utash with Wellness Key Chiropractic. Uh, one in five of us have a sleep disorder and far more than that have difficulty sleeping and aren't getting the best sleep uh, that they need. And so, especially right now with the stress being high, a lot of things are on our mind. And one of the best ways to get them off your mind is to put them on paper. An easy way that I have found to do that is to write out your fears, your fogs, and your frustrations. And this is something that you can do if you're having a difficult time getting to sleep, grab a piece of paper, maybe grab your phone, and literally write out fears, and then what are the things that, that are causing you, that are, that are making you scared, that are giving you fear? What are your fogs? What are the things that you just can't quite see how you're gonna navigate through? And then what are your frustrations? What's really bothering you and eating you up? And just write it down. Not the solutions, you're not trying to solve the, the problem, you're literally just writing it down. And I can tell you after doing this and then looking it back at it months later, they almost all work themselves out. And if we just get them on paper, you'll be able to sleep so much better. Again, I'm Dr. Joe Utash with Wellness Key Chiropractic. Write out your fears, your fogs, and your frustrations. Hey guys, welcome back this week. Uh, I just want you guys to focus on your spinal exercises. And so uh, something we call spinal molding, whether it's a pool noodle, whether it's the dinner roll, maybe it's just a rolled up towel, but doing those spinal molding, so underneath the curve of your neck and the curve of your low back, just like such, you do your spinal exercises. So uh, twisty, twisty, side to side, front to back, Ultimately, we're just trying to get that spine nice and loose, nice and warmed up, kind of scrub the barnacles off from day to day, do that twice a day, and then you land those rolls underneath that low back, support that curve underneath the neck, support that curve for 20 minutes, and that's how you can get the best results. Ultimately, chiropractic care is it's a process, right? And so it's not done for you, it's done with you. Certainly the adjustments are the most important part, take the stress off the nervous system, but if we're not supporting the spine, the structure, all the soft tissue around that on a regular basis outside this office, you're gonna get less than what you could be getting. So uh, Dr. Utash, can't wait to adjust you this week. Have a wonderful week and remember your spinal exercise. Hey guys. Hey guys, uh, this next uh, little video clip is from the immune system workshop we had last week and ultimately we're going over who do you trust uh, to make your healthcare decisions. Uh, I hope it's not me. Uh, I hope I can lead you in the right direction and uh, discovering uh, where health really comes from and uh, what you need to do to keep yourself and your loved ones healthy. The problem is, is who do we trust in America right now when it comes to uh, our nation's health? Doctors. Positions. <laughs> Good old Dr. Fauci. Yep, I know his name was going to come up. Uh, and, and, and him as well as the organizations, right? And so we're not picking on one person, but the organizations that they're coming from. So we look at uh, like CDC, right? Uh, and so, you know, for the most part, both America and then because the world kind of looks at us, whether we like to think of it as not or not, we are, you know, we I still think that we're one of the best countries in the world. Uh, but, uh, you know, people are looking at us, right? And so they look at our entities, our government entities, as kind of the authority in their particular fields or areas, right? And so when it comes to healthcare, you know, people in other countries still look at our CDC, right? And so our CDC tends to be the governing health body, that and the FDA, but let's just call it the CDC for right now. And uh, what I wanna possibly kind of have you look into, and you can find some funny YouTube clips if they're still available, uh, is that we're getting all these guidances and regulations and mandates, <laughs> suggestions, which then governors and people of authority put into mandates from the CDC. But can the CDC be fully trusted uh, and have they been scrutinized? Uh, and I think really you have to start with questioning. And so anyone that, that knows science, the science is always about questioning. And it doesn't, it's not disrespectful questioning. That's not, I, I mean no disrespect. But science is a hypothesis followed by, you know, an experiment and then you get results and then from res those results you can find a conclusion and then the next guy is going to say, mm, yes, and maybe we should look at it from this perspective and have another hypothesis and then another experiment and then another conclusion or results and then another conclusion. That's the scientific method, right? <clears throat> and somehow we have forgotten what, what is the scientific method, right? We, we think, okay, we we're told this, so we just do this. But that's not, that's not what science is. Science is, is, here's an idea, here's a theory, let's take a look at that, let's see, let's see how did they put that together, was there even rationale proper, and then does that work in this group of people, but maybe not this group of people, right? And science is always 
and should always be called into question. Because science is not, it's not a firm thing. It's always, it, it's always <clears throat> molding and moving and changing as we learn and discover more. So when we look at the CDC, unfortunately, even as little as five years ago, a, a large group from the CDC uh, made a formal complaint. And, and uh, let me just, I'll just read this uh, word for word here. They launched an ethics complaint alleging the CDC was being influenced by corporate and political interests uh, that ultimately was kind of defrauding the taxpayers, actually the people who are, you know, that it's supposed to be regulated. Um, and this was done uh, by the group inside of the CDC. Uh, they kind of formed this panel, they're like, these are doctors, PhDs, they kind of formed this panel and said, five years ago, eh, this is, something's a little, this is kind of weird, I don't know if this is actually, we're spending all this money, but is it actually benefiting the people who are supposed to be on the, the receiving end of this research, right? And there are some conflicts of interest. Uh, a funny video that you might be able to find, uh, maybe, it used to be able to easily find on YouTube, was how the FDA and the CDC and then corporations and how the uh, governing bodies and, and panels of those things keep interchanging. So you might work for Pfizer and Merck uh, for 15 years, semi-retire, and then all of a sudden you're on the advisory committee and board and panel uh, of uh, the FDA or the CDC, which it's, that is literally the definition of the fox guard in the hen house, right? Uh, and, and by, but the thing is, it also goes back and forth, right? And so you work for the CDC, you develop this tenure, this 10, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, and then all of a sudden, uh, now you're a, you know, a counselor, a independent, a contractor for uh, the FDA. And, and this is happening over and over and over. Like, it's so, it's so common that it's almost comical. Like, it's so ridiculous. And, and there's no regulations on that, uh, which you think, like as a person who's supposed to be beneficent, benefiting from these agencies that, wait a second, you, you should be working for me, <laughs> right? You, all, all of that research should be benefiting the, the people who are, who are paying your salaries and not, not the other way around, right? And, and unfortunately, that's where we see some of the, the failure. And this is not a, even a, a side of political, this is apolitical. This is how this whole system is, is worked and, and developed. So uh, unfortunately, you know, if you look at leadership, you should be able to judge a leader by its fruits, right? And his or her fruits. And so if you look at the CDC, okay, CDC, world-class leader, they're leading the world when it comes to health, health regulations, health decisions, health guidance. They're in particular in control of the United States. How's the United States doing when it comes to healthcare right now? Can we all agree that like healthcare sucks yep. in America? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's substandard, it's not good. Uh, and, and we can see some of the problems that we see right here, sick right? Care. What's that? It's sick care. It is sick care, right? It's, it's disease management. It's not healthcare. It has very little to do with health, right? Uh, and so, you know, do we have the worst in the developed world? Well, uh, they did a study uh, out of the 11 highest income countries, we're number 11.